Hi everyone and welcome to the Racing One Report where we bring you up to speed on the entire world of motorsports. I'm Pete Pistoni. Well, after two straight short tracks at Bristol and Martinsville, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series has a lightning fast, high bank, mile and a half super speedway in its future with Sunday's trip to the Texas Motor Speedway for the Samsung 500. And joining us now on the Racetickets.com hotline is the driver and owner of the Stewart Haas Racing number 14 Chevrolet, Tony Stewart. And Tony, you had a great run at a Atlanta Motor Speedway a few weeks ago, which, like Texas, is a mile and a half, but I know the two tracks are very different. What is the difference between Atlanta and Texas, and what's your approach for Sunday's Samsung 500? Um, I'm not sure that everybody really realizes the, that even though if you looked at the top of the tracks that they're shaped uh, almost identical, that uh, you know Texas is, is built quite a bit different than Atlanta is in Charlotte. Uh, the the what most people don't realize is that the bottom of the racetrack, the apron, uh, is paved all the way to the inside wall, and, and that's different than what you see at Atlanta and, and Charlotte and some of these other places. But uh, the reason for that is that's where it, what the IndyCar track was actually supposed to be. I mean, the IndyCars were intended to run on the apron, and that was going to be their racetrack. So uh, the, the transitions going into the corners and coming off the corners are a little more abrupt, and they're later. Uh, the entry, the, the banking comes in a lot later, and then it falls off a lot earlier than we have at the other tracks. Uh, and that's to accommodate what was going to be the IndyCar track, and uh, you know that that poses its own unique challenges. But uh, obviously, the grip level at Atlanta is a lot less than what we have at Texas too, and uh, you know, but that's what makes Atlanta so much fun. Uh, but you know, Texas every year that we go there, it, it's getting better and more worn into where uh, the groove moves around the racetrack and cars are running from the bottom to the top, and that's what, uh, at least from a driver standpoint, we enjoy that side of it. We enjoy not having to to be line committed and uh, helps the sound on the aero side to, to not be, uh, you know, we can, we can help ourselves out as drivers versus just being stuck behind somebody. Well, you're also going to run the Nationwide Series race at Texas on Saturday, driving one of the Kevin Harvick Incorporated cars. The Nationwide cars and the Spring Cup cars, very different. Is it beneficial for you to run the Nationwide Series race on Saturday in order to learn something that you could take with you to the Cup race on Sunday? I don't think it's I don't think you learn a ton. I mean, you might learn some stuff air pressure wise, but aside from that, as far as the actual setup of the chassis, uh, you know, they're night and day different now uh, between the two series. So uh, I don't think you'd learn as much as you used to. Tony Stewart joining us here on the Racing One Report. Well, while Tony Stewart and the rest of the NASCAR crew are headed to Texas this weekend, the NHRA guys were in Texas last weekend. Houston Raceway Park was the scene of the O'Reilly Spring Nationals, and Ashley Force Hood scored her second career funny car win, vaulting her from 10th to 3rd in the funny car standings. It came against her former mentor, Jack Beckman, and Force talked about being able to beat her former mentor. It was great. You know, Jack taught me when I first learned to drive a race car. It was a super comp dragster when I was 16, and it's just so amazing that 10 years later, him and I are both driving you know, nitro funny cars. It's just pretty neat to see how the world can change in, in such a short time. Well, let's open up our right turn mail bag and pull out a question from one of our Racing One readers. And this week our question comes from Bob Reed of Rossburg, Ohio, who wants to know the name of the track in Texas that the Sprint Cup Series used to race at before going to Texas Motor Speedway. Well, Bob, that was Texas World Speedway in College Station, Texas. And the last time NASCAR's top division raced there was 1981, when Benny Parsons went to Victory Lane. NASCAR came back to the Lone Star State in 1997, when Texas Motor Speedway opened up its gates. Thanks for your question, Bob. We'll send you out a nice prize. And if you have a question, just send it to us here at RacingOne.com backslash right turn. If we use it here on an upcoming edition of the Racing One Report, we'll send you out a prize. And of course, all your letters get printed on the website as part of our right turn mailbag every week. Well, as we head off to Texas, let's open up the Racing One notebook and give you some news and notes from around the racing world. And of course, Kansas Speedway was in the news a couple of months ago about a new hotel and casino that might be built on track grounds. A Hard Rock Hotel and Casino is back in work, and if that facility is built, Kansas Speedway officials will petition NASCAR for a second sprint car weekend that could come as soon as 2011. The 2009 Indy Racing League season kicks off on Sunday with the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg 
in Florida. It'll be the second year for the post-merger open wheel world and a field of about 20 cars is expected for Sunday's season opening race. And of course, we'll have all the news from St. Petersburg for you, as well as the entire Indy Racing League season here at RacingOne.com. Well, that'll do it for this edition of the Racing One Report. Remember, just keep it right here 24-7 for all your racing news. We'll have the entire weekend from Texas Motor Speedway covered for you here at Racing One, plus the IndyCar Series, the World of Outlaws, and everything else that's going on in the world of motorsports. So thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. This is Pete Pistone reporting.